Don't Starve is an open-world sandbox title released in 2013 by Kalai Entertainment, whose prior titles include Shank, Eats, and the cutscenes in Torchlight 2. On the surface, Don't Starve is a fairly simple game. You're given a single objective, to stay alive. In order to do so, you must explore the world around you, establish a fort, and figure out exactly what can help you. As you continue to play, you'll unlock new characters that change up the formula, putting a small spin on how the player will plan out their first few weeks in game. For example, Wilson's beard provides warmth during the winter, so a player playing him might be more inclined to work on making a self-sustaining farm rather than hunting creatures for their pelts. A wolf game player, on the other hand, is more adept at fighting, so he might decide to hunt monsters or friendly creatures as his main source of food and clothing, rather than growing his own. A common complaint about Don't Starve that might trip you up is the total lack of tutorials. Like Dark Souls, much of Don't Starve's difficulty stems from a lack of player knowledge. When beginning the title, both the player and the player character are tossed into a foreign land, with no clear objective other than not to die. Dark Souls has a bare-bones tutorial, explaining only the basics such as moving, dodging, and attacking, but it befuddles the player by not only giving an overabundance of stats, but a dearth of information when it comes to how equipment and stats actually work. Dark Souls pushes info onto you hand over fist, so much so that a new player might be overwhelmed and frustrated. Don't Starve does the opposite, but keeps the frustration. You're given nothing but your character's comments on items, and a few starting recipes to give you an inkling of what you should be looking for in order to survive at least your first night. Both of these titles want you to explore a new world, so that when you find something new, be it a new crafting recipe in the case of Don't Starve, or a hidden area in Dark Souls, both give the player a sense of accomplishment. Finding a new item, biome, or creature type after playing for a dozen hours is exciting, and it helps to keep the title feeling fresh. Both of these titles require the player to learn from their mistakes, which may require re-rolling a character, or in Don't Starve's case, the world. While Dark Souls has more of a structured, traditional narrative, both games rely heavily on the player taking the time to look at item descriptions in order to better understand the world that you have been placed in. By keeping the player in the dark regarding game mechanics, the developers are able to extend game time and by proxy, game enjoyment. In certain cases, Don't Starve hides stats from the player, namely faction points, weapon, and armor stats, and even the strength and base damage that every character has. The consumption or use of certain specific items are actually detrimental to the character, dropping their sanity or health without any sort of don't eat this indicator to the player. Don't Starve and Dark Souls want you to learn from your mistakes, not to avoid them altogether on your first playthrough. Many actions that you'll take have repercussions that the player couldn't possibly know of on their first play. Cut down too many trees, and you might awaken a Trent who's sick of your shit and won't stop stalking you and attacking you until you can find a way to make them stop, forcefully or otherwise. Harvest too many flowers early, and you might not have an easy way to keep your sanity up during winter. However, not everything is a negative. Seeing your food stockades expiring over time may give you the incentive needed to create a refrigerator early, but allowing it to turn into fertilizer can help you get your gardens ready before winter, giving you a plentiful and steady supply of food in the long run. Chop down enough trees to summon a Trent, find a way to appease it, and you might make a new friend who'll help fend off intruders in the dead of the night. A common game comparison to Don't Starve would be Minecraft, just based on the premise alone. Both titles involve some crafting, hunger meters, and creating your own base. This is where the similarities end, and the level of polish in Don't Starve begin to show. The creators of Don't Starve seem to have an idea of where they're heading with the title, and Minecraft... well... Minecraft didn't. For example, take Minecraft's endgame, aptly titled The End, a subpar boss fight where you don't use anything you've learned throughout the game in order to win the game, and instead you just break a few items in towers to defeat the end boss. It's lazy game design and feels like a cop-out after in-game months have passed by. The actual ending to the game is a wall of text that has little to do with the rest of the title and feels incredibly out of place, like the creator was trying to shoehorn in some deeper message onto the title in order to increase his indie developer credibility. Contrast this with Don't Starve. Just like in Minecraft, you find a device that transports you to another world. But in Don't Starve, you're suddenly given more than Don't Die as an objective. You're now given quests to complete in order to unlock an entirely new game mode on the main menu, 
and you're required to take everything you've learned over the course of the game in order to complete the new tasks you've been presented with, but in a much tougher environment. Don't Starve knows what it is, and it doesn't try to rise above the label of video game.